Hi, here's a really quick game I made in about 5 hours using top down engine and a whole bunch of other assets. Not only was it about 5 hours, but I was recovering from the second Covid vaccination shot, so wasn't feeling good at all. But I got a thrill game out of it, admittedly a pretty simple game, not a whole load of sound and effects and things going on, but nevertheless it's here, there is some sound, as you see there, um, and it's fully playable. So. Here's how I did it. Let's hope you learned something. Top Down Engine's a fantastic looking asset from More Mountains. It's a really complete engine for building top down games like this one. I'm a big fan of Diablo and other games in that genre, so I decided to pick it up this weekend and see what I could do with it. This is just one of the many demo scenes that come in the asset. I don't get to use all of the features that are in here in my little weekend hack, so I thought I'd show you this first. Notice how it's got enemy AI, loads of visual effects, audio effects, complete inventory system, weapons management, and a full menu system, all built in. It's a really good asset. Let's get going. So I was going to need a dungeon for the game. Fortunately, in a previous game called Sewer Zombies, this one on screen, I'd used Dungeon Architect to procedurally generate dungeons, and I'd used 3D Forge's Tyler Dungeon assets for the art. There's a whole load of videos that you can take a look at, see how I did that. But for this video, I'm just going to reuse what I did there. So what I did was I created a new scene and then I took the minimal 3D sample scene from Top Down Engine and opened that additively. And then I dragged in all of the components that you need. So that's basically everything that's in that scene except the level geometry. And then open up Dungeon Architect and drag in the Dungeon Grid Flow prefab. And from there, I dropped in the previously created Dungeon Theme and Dungeon Flow definition. And that was it. Click Build, and I've got my first dungeon. Click it again, and I've got another dungeon. Again, and another dungeon. Again, and another dungeon. We're a rolling. Now, one of the awesome things about the More Mountains top-down engine and all their other assets is they have loads of tutorial videos and loads of written content on their website as well. So, for this next stage, I needed to watch a few of those videos to learn what to do. My problem was that whilst my Sewer Zombies Dungeon Architecture theme was giving me a dungeon, my player wasn't spawning in the right place, so I had to figure out how to make that work. Well, documentation took me there pretty quick. Didn't take me long to figure out that you actually can spawn in at a particular point that's set in this level manager. I also discovered that actually the use bounds constrains the camera and I don't want it in that. So once I figured that out, it was just a case of going into my dungeon architecture theme, finding where my spawn point was being generated and creating my own spawn point in the dungeon. Next up, I realized I wasn't able to just drag that in in the inspector like you normally would because it was being generated eventually at runtime. So I wrote a tiny little script that found the spawn point. I'm using a cheating method here, game object, etc. We'll make it a little bit more performant later on, but it does the job for testing. So it goes off and it finds the object, and then we're going to assign that into the level manager upon start of the application. And that should be it. Just put a couple of comments in here to make sure that I do tidy up this code at some point in the future. Next up, we just need to wire that up in the inspector, make sure it can find the level manager, and then we can hit play and see if it works. And sure enough, it does. There's our little super dude wandering around in our first dungeon. Let's try generating a different dungeon. We'll change the seed, generate the dungeon, and there we go. It's spawning into a completely different place in a completely different dungeon. Let's try one more, change the seed, hit build dungeon, hit play, and there we go, completely different. So we'll now be able to generate these at runtime. We're gonna carry on doing it in the editor for now, but soon we'll do it at runtime. At this point, I wanted to improve the graphics a bit. And in the original Sewer Zombies game, I had this lovely fog, which looked great. And so I thought I'd reuse it. This is Cronex Volumetric Fog and Mist, and it's really easy to set up. I just threw it into the project, set up a profile, and there we had it, working fog. And this is what it looked like in-game. 
A little bit concerned about it being outside the walls, but inside, yeah, it looks okay. I'm not totally convinced the lighting isn't fantastic, but I think I'll stick with it for a while and see how it plays out. So next up, I wanted to add a better character in and also add some AIs, some zombies. So I went off to the tutorials again, found this great tutorial on how to create a character, followed it, and in no time at all, I had my own player character, and here on the screen, we're seeing my zombie. Basically, you add a character class, and then you go and set up a few fields and click a button. It really is that simple. It gets a bit more involved when you start adding AI and things like that, but to get going, quick and simple. And what you end up with is this. The zombie has a very basic AI in it, and he's following my player around. He's not attacking yet, but he is following him around and getting ready to attack. So really good progress so far, but I want these to be able to spawn throughout the whole dungeon automatically. So that takes us into the dungeon theme. I already had the zombie spawner, so all I had to do was drop my new zombie into that zombie spawner, hit build dungeon, and then hit play. Once I've run around the dungeon a little bit, I find a whole load of zombies who will follow me around, getting ready to attack me once I've got that part of the AI wired up. However, we've now got a problem. Look at the frame rate in the bottom left. 10, 7, 8. That's not good enough. We're going to have to optimize. So for optimization here, I'm using Fim Possible Creations optimizers. What you do is you put this essential optimizers onto your components, set a max distance, and then set up some LODs, which is what you're seeing here. So here I've got a light, and at LOD 1, it turns off some of the particles, the fire embers, and uh, we'll turn the lights off and it'll change the shadows. You can see it here in action. As the character moves through, the lights turn on and they're turning off behind him. Looking here, if you watch the room at the bottom, some zombies spawn as he gets close and attack him. And here you see it in play mode. And we're up to 57, 58 FPS. So not brilliant, but for very quick optimization, it's a good start and we can do more later on. So next up, I improved the lighting. You can see the fog's gone. I got a bit bored with it. I didn't think the effect worked. I've added a script to the lights here which cause them to flicker. See the shadows moving there and the shadows on the wall as the player moves about. This script's available under a CC0, that's public domain license. The link is in the description. Go grab it, do what you want with it. Okay, so time was beginning to run out. It was getting to the end of the weekend by this point. So I just threw in an Infinity PBR Barbarian, which you can see here. That was dead easy. Just simply drop the character into the existing uh, prefab and it worked perfectly. Uh, I did update the animation controller as well, brought in the Infinity PBR animations. You can see he has a sword and if I hit left arrow, he spins and attacks. He only has one attack at the moment, but it's a start. And down here, I've got some enemies. And if I let them get to me, they attack <coughs> and I get hit. And you just attack them and they will get hit. And when they die, you get all that feedback. All the feedback you're seeing, all the camera shake and everything, all that comes from top down engine. So it's all included. Now, did you notice that there was a new kind of enemy as well as the zombies attacking? There was a mummy. Where is he? There's one. And the mummy, <coughs> I was really lucky. On the Sunday afternoon of this weekend, I won a prize. He's actually floating. I'll have to fix that. Um, I won a prize in the Messy Coders Twitch interview with Polygon Maker, who is the maker of that mummy. Uh, you should check out the Messy Coder. Link in the description does awesome asset reviews and interviews. Polygon Maker was giving away a whole load of his assets in a raffle on that stream and I was lucky enough to win the mummy and so I threw that into this game as well. And there we have it. That is the end of my weekend hack. A fully working, very simple Diablo-like um, top-down game with uh, death of characters but also death of my character if I let these mummies have their way. I will die and we'll call that a day.